create, you know, get five percentage points of that to stay in rural communities, and we can get more volume. We're going to take it from somebody else, but that's how, we, that's how rural hospitals can get turned around. So anyway, that's the penalty. Am I clear? Okay, all right. So um, anyway, so here's the new world, right? This equation of, of uh, patient value is a denomination of quality divided by cost applied to a population. This is what we're competing on now. This is the world that we are moving to. The new market drivers are, are quality, cost, and population health. Anything we do to increase quality improves patient value. Anything we do to reduce cost improves population uh, and value. Um, ultimately, the goal is to improve quality, reduce cost, applied to a population. This is the new world. This is how, when we start to create these population-based systems, we're going to be competing for patients based on these three dimensions. Now let's talk about the definition of a payment system. Let's think about not an accountable care organization, but an accountable care as a payment system. And this, there's, there's a really important economic concept here that, I, that please, you, know, you wake up right now for just a second. Um, think about accountable care as a payment system, a mechanism where providers monetize the value derived from increasing quality, reducing cost applied to a larger population. Let me say that again where providers monetize, they put in their back pocket, the value of increasing quality, reducing cost applied to a population. And it takes the form of a lot of different things, bundled payments, value-based payment program, your own provider self-insured health plan, right? If you think about your own self-insured health plan, you insure all your employees, your 5,000 employees at Altoona, if I, my, my employees are self-insured, if I do anything to re, you know, improve their quality, reduce the cost, I monetize that. I put that benefit in my back pocket. Medicare ACOs, provider-sponsored health plans. Who's the biggest provider-sponsored health plan in Pennsylvania? You have a provider-sponsored health plan. In other words, a health plan sponsored by provider organizations. You have three of them. Major players, UPMC, Geisinger, and Highmark that is now investing a billion dollars in central Pennsylvania and a billion dollars in western Pennsylvania in developing a provider-based organization. And why are they doing it? it to, to maintain this, this, this payment system where providers monetize the devalues from increasing quality, reducing costs. And it's different this year. You guys weren't around when managed care came out. Managed care back in the early 90s. We did all of this crazy business. We called it managed care. And essentially what it was is insurance companies managing costs because the provider organizations sat on the sidelines. And, and a lot of people, when I'm starting to give this presentation, the, the, the groups that were around in the 90s come out and they say, well, what you're talking about, this accountable care payment as a mechanism, is, is you know, that we did that back in the 90s. It was called managed care and it failed miserably. Well, here's why I would suggest it failed miserably. Back in the day, accountable, or, a managed care, who monetized the value of increasing quality, reducing cost? Insurance companies or provider organizations? Insurance companies did. Who has the greatest ability to affect quality and cost? Insurance companies can do nothing other than negotiate. They're starting to do some things now. They're starting to set up, you know, kind of, um, you know, online physician clinics and those types of things. But they really don't have the, the, the control. We've got it under accountable care. We've got the incentives right now. The organizations have the greatest ability to affect quality and cost or benefit from it. We got the incentives right. The second thing is the government's all in now. Government says we need to change to a new payment system, a accountable care methodology in which providers monetize that value of increasing quality, reducing cost. New information systems to manage quality and cost. Back when I was involved in the IPA, we used to look at claims data to, to try to drive our, our improvement in our physician practices. And, and um, the problem is we had to, you know, the data, you know, we, we, we generated the claims, we had to wait 90 days for Blue Cross to run it, and then we had to wait another, you know, kind of, you know, probably 30 to 45 days. So every, any information that we were looking at from a claims was at least 120 days old. We couldn't, you can't do anything like that. Now we've got real-time information. We got agreed upon evidence-based protocols. Back in the day, 
you had no ability to hold a provider account, a, a, a community. I had a physician, I was, I was sharing this presentation with a doc in upstate New York, and, and I didn't have this one. And he said, Eric, you're missing one. He said, you know, last week I sent a patient to a cardiologist cardi and for just a minor you know, checkup. Cardiologist ran $10,000 worth of, uh, you know, kind of a whole panel of tests, just craziness. And, and, and this, 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 this primary care physician called the cardiologist and said, if you do that again, you'll never see another one of my patients. Because the standard of care said that for that, what I sent him for, you should have had this set of procedures. And the last one is going back is not an option. We are the most expensive healthcare system in the United States. You all, you know, MHA classes, you understand that, right? Um, and up until this point, we could say, well, yeah, we can be a little bit more expensive next year. We can be a little more expensive the year after that. You know, we can keep raising our costs and no one's going to care until, guess what? What happens? Fundamental economics. What happens as price goes up and up and up? What happens? Substitution. And right now, we've got two companies that have at least a, tri a trillion dollar um, market cap have gotten together with a couple other ones. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm sorry, this is Amazon, which does have a trillion dollar market cap. Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan have gotten together to say, we're going to do things differently. We cannot, you have failed us as a healthcare system. You are, you are failing us today. You are going to continue to fail us. We are going to do something different about it because we're paying too much. And we're going to start off for our own employees. And when we're done with our own employees, then we're going to offer our services to everybody else. Guess what? You all have to get out here and lead the charge of changing this thing, or we are going to be out of business. You know, I had an interesting presentation. I was in, um, I was in uh, Alabama for a, a conference I was speaking at, and, and um, this one speaker was talking about the fact that these companies, they just don't take over. Like, like um, uh, Amazon, they just didn't take over Barnes & Noble. You guys even know who Barnes and Noble is? Okay. <laughs> they just didn't take over Barnes and Noble. Or um, uh, what was that? Uh, what, what was the. the who? Borders. Borders. Well, Borders is still around a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but what was, what was the, 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 um, the video where you went and rented? Blockbuster. Blockbuster? <laughs> These organizations don't just take over a company, they take over an industry sector. Their bookstores are gone. They will be gone. And, and, and what we're talking about is eliminating significant, unless we do something about it. And so, so anyway, lots of good stuff. Wait, how did I get there? Okay, yeah, so, so ultimately, I believe, that, oh, okay, I know, I, this is, I, sorry, I was thinking confused here for a second. Um, so, we've got to do something. We've got this effect going on. We think, and I would suggest a payment system where providers monetize that value of increasing quality, reducing cost, applied to a larger population, is exactly right. It is a stable platform. The good news is rural hospitals have a really unique value in this new world. And here's where it came from. Back in 2012, when I was reading the ACO regs, I remember reading a, uh, you know, a, a, a line in the regs. It really changed the way I fundamentally think. And it said, a primary care physician can belong to one accountable care organization. Hospitalists and specialists can belong to multiple accountable care organizations. Now, why did that one line kind of strike this Arthur Anderson trained CPA like nothing I've ever read before? If anyone gets this, they, they definitely are going to get some candy. <laughs> Why? Not no candy for you. <laughs> yeah? What does that tell you? I'll give you a big hint here. A primary care physician can belong to one accountable care organization. Hospitals and specialists can belong to multiple accountable care organizations. Think about revenue centers and expense centers. How many times can you attribute revenue to your financial statements? Unless you're Enron and Arthur Anderson. 
you guys, you guys don't get that, do you? <laughs> Enron was a company that the Arthur Anderson was a CPAs for, and, they, and, and Enron was cooking the books, and Arthur Anderson signed off on it. And uh, Arthur Anderson, it was the second largest CPA firm in the world, got obliterated in 90 days. Doesn't exist anymore. What does that tell you about revenue centers and expense centers? Who's the revenue centers of the new world? You can only attribute revenue once. Primary care physicians. Who is expense centers of the new world? And? Right. right. Expense centers you can kind of distribute around. You can charge half your expense center here, half your expense center here, half your expense center. Revenue you can credit once. What just happened was primary care physicians in this new environment become the revenue generators. Everything else is an expense. Um, and so rural hospitals are generally a primary care based delivery system. You know, and, and, and let me, let me kind of point out this out right here. You got 20 minutes left? 15. 15. All right. We can get through this. <laughs> yeah, we can. Um, so, so, so let me, like, let's talk about a fee-for-service payment system and compare and contrast fee-for-service to population health. Okay? So, so in a fee-for-service world, this is our expenses, right? All our expenses, it's kind of, it's zero volume, our expenses are here because we have to have standby capacity. We have to staff our, our beds and we have to staff our emergency room. But every incremental unit of service that we generate, our, our, our expenses go up a tiny bit. We admit a patient to our hospital tonight. How much did our costs go up? Did we have to change our staffing model? We had to feed the patient, right? Maybe some drugs. So our expenses go up a little bit. But our revenue goes up, let's say, $1,500 a day. So in this model, any time when you have your revenue line much more steeply sloped than your expense line, if you push out enough volume and you get paid better for what you do, you will break even. You or you'll make money. Basic economics, L and X curve. Now, who do you think, okay, so, so one way you push out volume, the other way to make profit is to increase the slope of your payment line. So you get paid more for what you do. What's a great strategy for getting paid more for what you do? Yeah, but charging more isn't going to really result in much. But good, yeah, 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 that's one. Here, give me a hint. Cardiothoracic surgery. Neurosurgery. When you get a, paid hundred thousand dollars for a, for 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 surgery, or you know one 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 surgery, does that not shift the overall weighted average of your payment line up? And who maximized that world, rural or urban? Absolutely. Change it around to a population-based payment system. All right, we're now population-based payment system. How do we increase revenue? What do we need more of? More, not patients anymore. Lives. Lives. You need more lives, patient lives. How do we get more patient lives? How do we get more patient? Who are patients attributed to in most cases? Primary care. There you go, primary care. So a busy primary care practice has probably 2,000 patients in their panel, right? Average per capita health care costs in the United States last year were just over $10,000. What's the value of one primary care practice, busy practice? in a population-based payment world. Do the math quick, We're running out of time. What's the value of one primary care practice in a population-based payment world? I've only had one person get this right out of the block. Say it. Here's the math, folks. 10,000 times 2,000. Who thinks two million? You, you forgot a decimal. Twenty million dollars is the value of a pri one busy primary care practice in a population-based payment world. Is there no reason why everyone's interested in primary care physicians right now? Who do you think is ready to kind of have maximum value in that world, urban or rural? <laughs> and oh, guess what? Guess what just got added to the expense line? Specialist technology and bricks and mortar. So rural has an interest. Yeah, yeah, hurry up. I have a question. How, there's like a decrease in primary care physicians though, like in yeah. medicine. Yeah. The market's going to work because right now the compensation is going up in primary care. It's going to continue to go up because this is what's going on right now. You got people like Optum, 
which is United Health United Healthcare's uh, kind of for-profit arm, they now employ more physicians and mostly primary care physicians than Kaiser. Because the insurance companies, people are starting to realize that the primary care are the revenue centers of the new world and are taking them over. They will drive up price for primary care. And as price goes up, this is basic economics, what happens? As price goes up, supply increases. Basic supply and demand rules, okay? So let me, let me, so what we gotta do is, is we have a stable platform here of fee-for-service, right? Perfectly aligned payment and delivery system. The more money, the more you do in sick care, the more you make. Over here, we've got a perfectly aligned payment system. The less sick care you do, the more health care you do, the more you make. This is a population-based payment world. This is a fee-for-service population. Until this, this started smoldering. For all the reasons we talk about, people have taken the stick. Now, we just can't step from here to here. This is going to take years. And that's why I think population health, as people talk about it, it's, it's, it's going to be a bunch of different things. But what we've got to do is figure out how to step across this, or we just can't step across. We're going to see this go down over time. We're going to see this come up over time. And everything else here is schizophrenia. Because what does, you know, the